Hey guys, this is Josh and today I will be going over how to create your own orchestral template or your dream template I should say. Uh, this will be uh, your go-to template where you load up your session that is completely blank but it will include all of the instruments that you usually use for things like film scoring or video game composing. Also, you'll be seeing a sneak peek on my new 2019 template with uh, the instruments that I've acquired over the holiday sales. And I'm really excited to um, kind of give you a demonstration of that. Um, other than that, please subscribe to my channel and, and ring the notification bell uh, if you want to see more of these type of videos. Please take some notes because there are a lot to cover. Here we go. Steps that I will break down for you on where to begin with this crazy madness that we, we will get ourselves into. So the first thing is um, load your instruments. Load your instruments, meaning uh, uh, you can do that inside the DAW or highly recommended do it through Vienna Ensemble Pro. So I'm going to um, give you the other screenshot on my other monitor here and this is Vienna Ensemble Pro you can use um, your DAW to load these instruments in especially if it's uh, something like Digital Performer uh, which has their own rack uh, but if you use Cubase, Pro Tools, Ableton, Live, um, Fruity Loops it might be better to use something like this which is a Vienna Ensemble Pro host and Vienna Ensemble Pro will uh, give you um, a lot of options on how to route everything as well as uh, distribute your cores or your CPU cores. So uh, for instance, I have two instances here. One is the brass choir and percussion and the other is loading my strings and woodwinds together. On uh, the preference or project settings, nope, that's not it. On this one, there. You can actually uh, see how many or, or assign how many threads you're going to be using per instance. So uh, since I have two instances, I have six threads going towards the uh, brass choir percussion instance and another six through the other one. All right. Uh, you can also change how many connections from you know 16 all the way to 48 and so on or 64 outputs and inputs. Okay, uh, I, I recommend going as high as possible because you won't know how much you'll need until that happens and then you'll have to restart it if you don't have enough. So do that first. Anywho, um, going on, so when you're loading your instruments in, um, it may be contact, it may be play from east-west, uh, it may be Vienna Instruments player. Um, whatever the uh, actual uh, virtual plugin it is, uh, you can load it and then start uh, putting in all your instruments. So this one here is my brass. If you're doing key switches, uh, there's trade-offs on that. Um, and it might be more convenient to um, use one or the other depending on your workflow. I kind of do both. I tend to have uh, samples I like that uh, uh, just are strictly key switch based and and that's okay um, it's, it's good to learn how to do both and um, navigate that way now once you get all of the articulations down um, the next thing to do is um, uh, go back to your other screen which uh, will house the DAW all right so right now I'm down on the brass section and I have the solo uh, horn legato patch and that is in its separate file and MIDI channel over here it's on uh, channel 1 and I can play I could uh, go down here and do the same thing I could combine them let's say I wanted a uh, so a lot legato patch, but with maybe some marcato uh, added in the front of it. And so on, right? I should mention on the second step, when you are uh, on the DAW side, creating your uh, MIDI tracks that are um, routed from the virtual instrument plugin, I would uh, 
make a system for yourself that is easy to recognize the track right away. Uh, TPT for trumpet, um, put a number after it if it's uh, one, like a one solo or down here I have trumpet two which is um, two trumpets going at the same time and I also have trumpet three and trumpet four and listen to the difference. And you have different options that way. Uh, articulations are important. So if, if you are separating out your tracks through articulations, um, make sure they're easily recognizable um, and something that you don't have to sit and decipher. What does uh, TWTSY mean? You know, and it gets it can get pretty hairy. So keep it simple. Um, you can. Uh, you know, widen this as much as you need to widen it if you need uh, um, something that's more detailed. So there you go. Um, the color coding is also important. Um, everyone's going to be different. I like for some reason I like to think woodwinds of the spring color of green uh, or light green stuff like that. So it works for me and um, I have most of my woodwinds ordered out that way uh, let's see here my brass is in red and purple alright and then you also have your keyboard instruments here uh, keyboard instruments are violet I believe and a piano patch that's a different color just so it's easy to recognize um, percussion just assortment of colors to keep everything organized and um, distinguished so uh, again this is mostly in score order timpani first and then down to um, your crash cymbals uh, you have your bass drum and epic sounds that are kind of more hybrid okay um, these are instruments ranging from uh, metropolis arc one to Damage from Heaviosity, uh, Evolve from Heaviosity, uh, Action Strikes from uh, Native Instruments, and Storm Drums from, uh, Storm Drum 2 I, sh I should say, from East West. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then the, uh, you have your more orchestral instruments like Snare Drum from the East West Hollywood Orchestra moving down to tambourine and whatnot so so super important that um, when you're working with percussion that you have a system for yourself that's easily um, retrievable and, and you know where exactly everything is strings are very similar there are a lot of articulations and strings too and I'm using mainly Hollywood orchestra and you know, Hollywood strings so you'll see how the solos are um, labeled different color as opposed to the ensemble. Now that concludes the first big uh, step of loading your instruments and then having your instruments um, labeled and, and color coded. Okay so now we are at a point where you have your instruments all ready to go all um, neatly color coded so what to do next? You can start getting your instruments to be leveled the same way so uh, for instance if I'm working with my uh, woodwinds let's pick woodwinds this time and let's do clarinet let's say um, the clarinet here sounds pretty healthy uh, level wise in, in terms of volume but uh, the next patch here sounds kinda loud or too soft I should say I mean, I, I'm exaggerating but you want to get it so it's generally the same so you know what you do is you just go back and forth okay and it's still kind of quiet so maybe I should go higher and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, uh, doing that over here on this screen 
Um, so let me show you that. So going back to this screen here, uh, find what instrument you're at and go to the clarinet and right here uh, find the one that coincides with that which was clarinet uh, shorts okay and right now it's at 6 dBs so let's say I'm right here and I just want to get it a little bit higher and leveled with the first sample okay that looks that, that sounds a bit better now and so on so um, at a micro level, if you're working with a lot of these articulation samples and you're separating them out, um, at a micro level, get those leveled out first. So you can work pretty quickly that way and just um, make sure that all of your samples within the same uh, instrument sounds the same volume. It would be helpful to uh, select all of your tracks and, and then uh, with your MIDI controller and your wheel, um, uh, set your uh, what do you call your controller one, your mod wheel, all the way up, or maybe not all the way, maybe uh, just like three quarters of the way up, around 96, and then do that for um, CC11 too. So you can kind of see that right now um, with that with that moving excuse me and then also um, your CC7 is optional but CC7 for play um, will control the main volume um, uh, that's not visible on any uh, uh, virtual knob but uh, uh, contact is different if you use contact uh, based instruments sample instruments then CC7 controller will um, control the actual output the main outputs in there so they're all kind of different but um, you want to you want to make sure that they're all kind of behaving the same and so at a micro level start there and then at a macro level meaning uh, your your top woodwind instruments like clarinet oboe flute piccolo get those to sound balance with each other okay uh, another consideration to know er, uh, to to make here is that you want a, a meter a visual meter that you can read off of so let's see get that back up um, that is kinda around 30 negative 25 around there okay it can maybe peak towards negative 20 though and <clears throat> I, I think it's important to uh, understand the gain staging process so when you're uh, working with a lot of instruments and let's say 10 instruments all play at the same time that all compounds and it just gets higher and higher um, up to the point where it may start clipping so uh, lower is generally better you don't want to go too low but um, you want to maybe a healthy signal around negative uh, 25 to negative 20 and see how that works uh, experiment test it out see if you know 10 instruments start to uh, raise up in clips so let me show you what I mean by that um, just with the use of um, some woodwind instruments going down to horn going down to some trumpet some low brass and let's do uh, some strings down here. Okay, I've never uh, done this so many uh, spread out like this, but let's, let's for fun. Let's see how that sounds. So I'll do one note in my left hand and one note in my right hand. Okay. So those are all those notes playing. And now let's say I, I added uh, another note in there. Okay, you notice how all of my notes here, or all of my uh, my metering right here, uh, peaks around negative 10. And that's where you want it. Um, negative 6 would probably be the, the highest you want it to be because once you start mixing and adding reverb and tails to that, that'll actually get it even louder. And you don't want it ever to clip to negative or to the zero um, and, and the dBFS scale, so uh, keep that in mind. 
to summarize about uh, what it, it means to work with um, the leveling, um, it's basically to to save you time in the long run, not worry about um, doing the balancing because the balancing should be there already. Um, uh, besides the balancing, panning is also good. So if you're working with those two different libraries, like uh, for me, the Metropolis low strings and let's say um, low strings from the Hollywood Orchestra, make sure their panning is similar so that they all come from the same stereo image. So panning, you, you can do some of that if, it, if they're different libraries uh, is what I recommend. Um, but with the, uh, uh, the panning and also maybe the stereo imaging, if you want to collapse it to mono, um, things like that, I usually do that towards the uh, end of the uh, mixing stage. Uh, everyone's different though. Uh, and it really depends on the project. You know, some projects um, require a traditional layout. Other projects may want, you may want to do a more modern approach where the uh, contra bass and a lot of bass instruments are in the middle uh, so that it has uh, maximum impact uh, through the low frequencies. Either way, um, you know, it's nice to uh, export that and then do the mixing so you have maximum flexibility. Okay, moving on. Once you get your your uh, instruments set and the level set, route your instruments. That's step five. So step five will be routing your instruments. The routing system um, is important because um, if you do it right, and it can get pretty complex, um, you can save yourself a lot of time in the end when you start exporting. Um, the main idea here is to uh, trickle down all your individual instruments to a point where they become stems. Stems are going to be mainly the family of instruments such as woodwind, woodwinds, uh, percussion, brass, strings, choir even. And um, you want to separate that out into f uh, five to eight stems. Now, uh, I'll show you what I have done in the past. On the main stems, you'll see over here, starting the, on the right-hand side, let me just hide this for you so you can see that better. Okay, is um, you have woodwinds, brass, choir, keys, uh, which is the percussion keys, percussion uh, drums, your string, uh, other, which would be like drones or synthy sounds and then over here is the effect stem which is um, all the reverb tails and things like that will go in there so um, you want your your goal is to get that uh, sorted down to those eight stem tracks um, your instrument tracks over here will be routed as such where you can maybe quickly route them this way and go into woodwind stem but um, I have one intermediate uh, stem as well and um, these are actually um, a lifesaver so this might not make sense but I'll try to explain as simple as possible I've created a group bus for each individual instrument so for instance flute um, will cover all the flute tracks that I have here luckily uh, flute is flute, so it's just one per one instrument per group. Um, what I'm trying to say is, if you route your instrument tracks into an individual bus first, and then have that group bus go into another one um, to the main stem, then you have advantages of uh, going here, here, and um, exporting this in a score order format because I have them numbered numerically from uh, 0 1 to uh, whatever that is I have down here to uh, 57 and then also it gives you the advantage of if you um, load in, in your custom instruments uh, within the session you can route them into something like other one let's say I have a, a cool um, drone sound I could put that in other one <coughs> Excuse me. If I have a um, very synthetic synthesizing sound, I put in other two and, and so on. Um, and then if you export that, you could, you know, do that with the naming 
scheme of a group channel and so on. I think it's channel name is what I want to go for, like that. So when, when you're doing a batch export, like this for instance, look at the naming scheme and it says 01 FX stem. And so meaning it, it'll be labeled as such like this all the way for each track. And then when you um, export, re-export back for mixing. So when you do the uh, re-exportation here, you can um, put them out in score order without uh, much hassle. Or another option is <coughs> you can um, create an audio print of our audio track that will show all the same exact instruments you have and then route in uh, whatever group it is. So an example here is route your uh, audio tracks as such where the input stereo input is coming from your group. And so for instance if I have a track I um, have, want to uh, export in real time, kind of like the Pro Tools way, you can do something like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and record that. Alright, then all of a sudden I have that to work with. And it's um, very seamless. Um, you save so much time doing it this way uh, down the road. But the setup process takes some work. So again, the stereo input has to be coming out from uh, the stereo output of the bus. And then uh, on top of that, when you have your uh, individual buses, your your micro level uh, groupings, I like to call it, that have uh, each instrument. Then you can group that into uh, the bigger main stems. Okay, so uh, use this um, as a way to learn, and, and maybe you can navigate and and figure out your own way of doing things. But th these are suggestions, and I hope this will help you in your. Um, process of, of completing a template. Uh, I'd like to leave on a last note here that uh, it doesn't hurt to also create an uh, FX uh, template, uh, meaning you have something like uh, large halls, um, mono uh, style uh, reverb or, or uh, mono style FX tracks as well as uh, delays and what whatnot. So you can have that already preloaded. Okay, so happy composing, happy template creating. And if you have any questions, leave some comments below. Um, if you have any input, I'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Have a good one.